This is my go-to case for my nuts, bolts and spares. Sometimes, like this case, your radio shack becomes an absolute mess. Hi, this is Enthusiastic Steve in his newly revised shack. Like I said, if your shacks become so untidy, so unmanageable, I like experimenting, I move radios around, I plug things in and out, and eventually you end up with cables and wires where you don't want them. So I ended up stripping my shack back to bare table. And this little video shows you what I did to actually rebuild it, fit the, fit the radios, connect up the different cable assemblies, and get it to what I've got today. Using a good old trusty drill and a screwdriver. So other than get a tidy uh, bench, tidy radio shack, what was the what else was on my mind uh, when I went into this little project? Well, over the last uh, year, I've been uh, kind of collecting together uh, various uh, old CB radios, uh, the old 11 meter radios. I think these things have become pretty nostalgic. They're um, becoming collectible uh, actually now. These radios are of course over 40 years old and it was a lot of these radios which got a lot of people into the radio hobby today. Um, I can recall playing around with sideband radios and, and then the UK FM radios in the days when there was a lot of skip activity and the Americans were booming through. I remember walking into my local Emporium one day, it was a darkened showroom and they had all these uh, CB radios on display, or only receive only at the time, they weren't legal to be uh, transmitted, so this was pre-81. And just hearing all those magical voices coming in from across the pond there. Um, and that kind of stuck in my head. I got into shortwave listening and then um, CB radios, and now I'm into the amateur radio and other anything else related to radio. So I wanted to set up a little nostalgia corner for collections. That was one of the aims. I also wanted to set up a little scanning receiving area and uh, amateur area for VHF, UHF and HF. So that's what I've done. This is the how I did it. So this little process I'll show you takes you into the construction of the little cabinet I made um, to wire everything in and setting it up and it shows you the end product. So enjoy. I'll flick through this quickly and hopefully you might gain some ideas for yourself if you're looking at doing up your little radio shack. Yeah, first job was to dismantle everything there was in the shack and take the uh, little wooden drawers outside ready for painting. Mask them all off and uh, use a rattle can to uh, spray the areas that needed painting. Allow some time for the uh, coats to dry and reapply about three coats of uh, paint. Once happy with the finish, uh, start to slowly remove the masking tape to reveal your newly freshly painted cabinet. It's amazing what a little simple bit of black paint can do to an old cabinet. The next task was to measure the cabinet out and drill loads of holes. These were to connect the brackets, the coax leads, the power leads and the audio. Then I was able to install the first radio on the brackets uh, with nice little sunken holes at the top and eventually put the other radios onto the same shelf. With so many leads and wires and coaxes coming in and out of the cabinet, it was, it was important to actually mark the cables up so I knew what went where. Some proved a little bit difficult to fit, especially with my chubby hands. I used little rubber feet to uh, protect the radios from one another and with everything all marked out eventually it started all to come together. I wanted to be able to connect all the radios by a switch to different antennas so I came up with a multiple switch system and also included a TVI or low bandpass filter. Keep note of all the coax runs and colour code them if necessary. Gather all the loose cables and tape them down, ready to transport the box back indoors. Here it is uh, located back in the corner of the bench, uh, it will get moved down a little bit. I'll then place my big Excalibur base station radio on the top, using some rubber mat and anti-slip under its feet to stop it from moving around. This is what it looks like so far. The rest of the bench looks like it's covered in spaghetti wiring. 
the next task was to work out how I was going to connect the power supplies to all these radios. My plan was to use a series of chop block connectors, as they're called here in the UK, and connect up some wiring uh, in series to make it a like a, a, a tag strip uh, power bar. So one line will go off to my transformer and all the other supplies required for the radios will go into the bottom of it. I then connected uh, ferrite beads to all the leads and identified them before connecting them up to the chop block assembly. I then placed the whole assembly into a box uh, to make it all nice and neat and tidy. I then checked out the polarity of the remaining leads and used lots of patch leads. I wanted to keep any RF interference down to a minimum. So using chokes, beads, I made a nice choke where the antenna came into the shack and uh, RF beads on basically anything I could. The next little project was to make some rack handles for the Excalibur radio. So measure twice, uh, cut once uh, to make the attaching brackets. I then managed to get some handles uh, off of uh, an internet website cut them, filed them, polished them, assembled them all together and here you see the product coming together with some movement there for adjustment. Final clean and polish and as you can see they've come up spick and span. Fit them to the radio and I think you can say you couldn't tell these apart from the originals. Next install our antenna switch and fit the old VSWR meter and frequency counter. I also used an audio switching unit, so all the audio from those radios come out through a BHI speaker to clean up the sound. They never sounded better. Still a little fettling to do and uh, just to finish off here and there, but I'll leave you with some pictures to show you what it's coming up like. On the wall, a map of the south coast there of the Isle of Wight and where I live just opposite. And a tribute to my uh, little sci-fi collection here, uh, Jerry Anderson uh, series UFO from the 1970s.